Hello. I hope that you are doing well. I am Meredith and I am an intuitive and an astrologer based out of the mountains of North Carolina. And I wanted to, yeah, just not put my face in this. I'm sitting on my bed, just recording. Um, I kind of like inspired myself on the way home to um, make a little video about energy because I enjoy a lot what I felt when I shared about energy dynamics uh, in my last astrology video at the end uh, on the full moon in Capricorn. It was a long one. And I just wanted to come talk about a couple of things because, you know, I wanted to talk about like different types of empathy, want to talk about, you know, how the universal law of correspondence uh, affects, you know, our reality and like maybe kind of like give some supportive tools, maybe in the form of some type of series. So if you're listening to this and you have any questions about anything energetic or astrology, maybe related, maybe not astrology, but if you have any questions energy related, that are based on what I talk about, maybe some ideas for what I can share on. <clears throat> I have definitely dealt with a lot of different energetic things under the sun on this planet and definitely have, um, have overcome a lot. And I think that if there's any I don't want to like gatekeep, like how to take care of yourself energetically. Not that I'm the only one who knows this, but I like how I do it. So anyway, you know, the first thing that I want to talk about is the law of correspondence. And, you know, the further that I go on learning and, you know, I encounter all kinds of people with all kinds of different belief systems. And it's very fascinating to me whenever I meet somebody who feels that what they've arrived on for themselves is the capital T truth of it, of the situation. I think that's kind of a put off, like, um, especially when because I have somewhat of a foundational knowledge of theology, you know, I'm self-taught, but I, you know, I can keep up in conversation with a Christian, you know? And so, for example, when there's like astrology and energetic shielding techniques, for example, in the Bible, you know, I'm hesitant to look at it like 100% literally. Right. So Anyway, all of that to say, I recoil into myself when people say that they have the capital T truth, but, and I'm going to contradict myself, I think that the natural laws, i.e. the universal laws or hermetic principles, if all man-made law was burned to the ground and we had to start over, we would be left with universal law. That's my belief anyway. I believe that universal laws as in hermetic principles are like the capital T truth. That's just how the universe works, but you know, don't take my word for it, read them, discover them, see what, you know, fancies you about them. And then maybe try to integrate some of them in your life and see what happens. You'll be surprised. You might be shocked and amazed. So my favorite universal law so much that I have it tattooed on myself is the law of correspondence as above. So below as within, so without. Hmm. So what does that mean? The law of correspondence as above. So, so below means that what happens in higher realms in dream time in planes that are non-physical in your energy field which we'll get into that in a second, a little bit more. What happens in the above plane matriculates into the physical as above, so below. As within, so without. So if you think about your electromagnetic field or your energy field or your aura, or like there's definitely a lot of different words for this 
um, you know, this is something that surrounds you, but stems from inside of you. So it's like a toroid, you know, shape and definitely the core of your body has a lot to do with the outside of your energy field as within, so without, right? So this also means, you know, in a sense, the condition of your mind, which is all levels of your mind, by the way, it's your subconscious mind, your unconscious mind and your conscious mind. And the condition of your body, which does kind of serve as a map for, you know, your emotions and that kind of thing as within. So without your inner universe is a mirror of the outer universe. And we live in a mirror. This is a mirror world. So there is a lot of mirroring going on for sure. And, you know, so now that we've got the law of correspondence going on, going down, we've kind of, we've uncovered what it, (laughs) we've uncovered what it means. You know, this is like a really important reason, I think, to learn the principles and the foundations of energy, not just the the hermetic laws, but how your field works. You know, if you find someone who is a really good energy worker And I'm not necessarily talking about Reiki, but I'm talking about someone who's doing like field work as in like, um, you know, clearing things and running energy places and distributing energy. And like, if you got someone who can literally like move energy in your fields, you keep that person, but also, you know, this, this type of work really does quickly, very quickly affect your outer circumstances. So that's why I feel like it's so important right now to be learning about the basics, at least of energy. And, you know, I think especially if you identify with the idea of like being an empath, right? And I think that this is something that has been very well botched in our culture. I believe that um, empathy kind of like can be a bunch of different things. And it depends on the person you're talking to, what the kind of empathy they're referring to. Is it actually empathy? So we're going to get into that a little bit too. So, um, you know, (laughs) definitely I don't feel like a lot of people or I'll say maybe like my read on it is like 40% of people who claim to have an empathic ability are actually traumatized and have a Swiss cheese aura as a result of that. So if you are like running other people's energy, if you are like experiencing people's, you know, health problems or like emotional conditions in your body, then the first thing that you need to do is make sure that your aura is sealed, which means that not only are you working to retrieve the parts of yourself that have been left behind and forgotten in states of trauma, that's how the Swiss cheese aura comes about, by the way, you know, you have to regularly like go back and retrieve the aspects of yourself that you have lost. And that can be a very painful process. And there's many ways to do it. Integration happens over time, I found. And, um, you know, but that's a huge part of it, which means, you know, inner children, like tending to them, um, that kind of thing. And if you begin to heal and you find that your aura is nice and sealed, and you feel that your empathy goes away, or at least the way that it was showing up before in the sense that it's not so debilitating. Sure. You're probably clairsentient, but you might just have had a Swiss cheese aura. However, if you are like, so if you're like me and you know how to seal, seal your aura and you know how to retrieve your inner children and retrieve aspects of your soul from time gone by and, you know, and you still have like 
feelings of empathy. Empathy is not like the glamorized ability that it's purported to be. It can be very painful physically. Um, it can be very painful emotionally. And I think ultimately like every empath can really use a greater sense of boundaries, right? So we're going to talk about that in this series. I definitely want to know like all of your questions, because this is just a cursory talk before I get into like breaking down some of the different tools. I just felt kind of motivated to come have an introductory chat about it. And I'll say this, if you are an empath at the end of your rope, know that Every receptive empath is a projective empath, which means that if you are someone who like really becomes a shell for the everything else of others, right. And the energy around you, you have also simultaneously the ability to change the energy of a whole entire room. So I think probably the first like episode or whatever of this series that I'll do will be on grounding most likely. And, um, from there I might just build it up. So let me know what you want to hear. Let me know what you want to talk about. Um, hopefully this will be a pretty like, uh, engaged, uh, series. And if it's not, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how the response to this is. And if people, are looking for something like this, uh, let me know, drop your thoughts in the comments. All right. Bye.